Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the outstanding pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We got a great horse uh, edition of Horse Center coming up because we had a great weekend of racing last weekend uh, with big races and big performances at Monmouth Park and Saratoga. Yeah, let's let's talk about the stars. Let's celebrate these races last weekend. It was a big weekend of racing, both at Monmouth, where you were Saturday for that Haskell, and of course uh, at Saratoga as well. So we're going to do that. We're also going to handicap and uh, give out top picks for the Jim Dandy, Matt, because that's a big race on Saturday. Lots of Travers implications, and the Travers is the race everybody's looking forward to right now. But before we do that, we talk about these stars. We have to start with the Haskell, Matt. I'll tell you what. Uh, as, uh, as the uh, Haskell field came to the top of the stretch, mind frame at four to five, bearing down on doorknock on the outside, it looked like mind frame was going to run right by. He didn't. Doorknock too tough in the Haskell. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, you know, uh, Doorknock uh, uh, was breaking from the one post, trainer Danny Gargan had been a little bit concerned about drawing the rail after a bad experience from the rail in the Kentucky Derby, but this was a much smaller field. He got out of the gate uh, smartly, got to the lead, controlled the race, actually uh, lost the lead uh, uh, at the top of the stretch to Timberlake, and then Mindframe made his move and, and took and took over the lead and and, and I don't know mind frame just looked like uh, he was going to overwhelm Dornock but Dornock dug in again like in the bill in the Belmont Stakes mind frame again was uh, uh, racing greenly in the stretch and this time Dornock uh, dug in and drew off to win by a significant margin. Yeah, D Dornock was the best horse in the Haskell. Mindframe, talented horse, only four lifetime races, but he's making mistakes. And uh, I don't know if he gets over that or how soon he gets over that. But uh, you look at the start, you look at him down the lane again, Belmont Stakes revisited. Doorknock, the better horse late when he needed to be to win. And we got to start talking about Doorknock as the best three-year-old male in the country, Matt. Uh, he got that fountain youth early in the year. They tried to rate him in the bluegrass, I guess, and, and it didn't really work out. Uh, draw a line through the Kentucky Derby where he was just knocked out at the start and, and to finish 10th wasn't mid-pack, was not a bad result considering what he went through there. But the last two races, big races, Belmont win, Haskell win. He is our, our leader of the three-year-old uh, male division and, and Doorknock knows how to dig in. Let's call him digging in Doorknock, Matt Schiffman. Yeah, why not? because he certainly has shown that uh, uh, he's a talented horse. But, you know, when you couple that with being a determined and courageous horse, uh, you've got the division leader. Yeah, yeah. He is a good-looking horse, too. Uh, so well-bred, so good-looking. I'm disappointed to learn that Spendthrift, uh, he's already going to Spendthrift next year, Matt. Um, part of what's wrong with racing because we're only going to see doorknock probably for a couple more races. You got the Travers, the Breeders' Cup Classic, maybe one in between, but then he's off to stud. That's disappointing. Speaking of the Travers, is he the horse to beat? Um, he's certainly the horse to, be, to beat amongst the three-year-old males, Brian. Oh, amongst the three-year-old males. I'm glad you said that, Matt, because my horse to beat the Travers is not a male. It's actually... A filly. And of course, we all know I'm talking about Torpedo Anna, Matt. Torpedo Anna has been absolutely terrific. Before the show last week, we both said she was our top three-year-old of either gender. I saw nothing in the coaching club American Oaks to change my mind. Yeah, that, that that's for sure, Brian. Torpedo Anna, you know, uh, putting those grade ones together, looking, uh, looking so impressive in the coaching club American Oaks. Uh, Winning by uh, uh, winning by open lengths again. Each one of these wins by four, five lengths. Uh, uh, there's nobody that can beat her right now in the Philly division. Yeah, there's nobody, and and that leaves a decision for Kenny McPeak and, and team. Do they run in the Alabama 
it's hard to pass up a historic, prestigious grade one, $600,000 race, where she's going to be one to nine to run in a very difficult grade one, albeit more money, uh, $1.25 million Traverse stakes against probably what's going to be a pretty big field of, of good males, including Doorknock. So uh, a big decision coming. Any thoughts on that decision, Matt? Uh, yeah, you know, I've thought about it a lot, Brian, you know, and, um, uh, it, it's a great spectacle when, uh, a great Philly like, uh, Torpedo Anna takes on the boys in a big race. Uh, uh, um, but on the other hand, I, I'm not sure how much it, it gains for, Torpedo, Torpedo Anna in terms of value. I guess it gives her a chance to become horse of the year, overall horse of the year, if she beats the boys in the Travers and then goes on to win the uh, win one of the Breeders' Cup uh, races this year. Um, but I don't know. I have I have mixed feelings because, like you said, it's going to be a really really tough uh, performance that will be needed to win the Travers against what I think is a pretty good and deep group of three-year-old boys. Yeah, it's a deep group. And I think we'll see a deep group in the Travers. Collectively, I think they're very dangerous. Torpedo Anna, uh, I, I don't think her connection should be scared of anybody, any of the males going into the Travers. But when you face nine or 10 good males at a mile and a quarter, she's never been farther than nine furlongs. At a mile and a quarter, where most of the males have been a mile and a quarter already, that's a, that's a bit of a disadvantage. It'll be very interesting to see. They say a decision is coming as soon as Saturday. As far as her four races this year, Matt, uh, she's won them all easy. She showed me something different in each, each time. The reason I liked her so much in the Kentucky Oaks, the fantasy, you could just see B.J. Hernandez sitting on a powder keg. And she rolled and she did it effort, effortlessly at Oakland Park. The Kentucky Oaks, big field, wet track. She had to run fast early to get out there, to get great position in the Oaks. She did, and she still had a ton left. The Acorn, she threw a shoe, and she still ran a big race in the Acorn. And then the Coaching Club American Oaks, you know, horses don't always come back from starts that she had. She hopped at the start. She banged the gate. She gave Leslie's Rose an immediate three lengths or so. Brian Hernandez pushed a button. She got a perfect position going to the turn. Then he pushed another button and quickly gained on the leaner when uh, Leslie's Road was opened up by three or more lengths late in the backstretch. I think she's, uh, well, I'll say it again. I think she's the best three-year-old in the country. Yeah, and Brian, what you've described there are, the, are what I consider to be characteristics of a great horse. A great horse has to do what she has done on the track, win impressively, beat good horses, run fast times. But that's not enough, Brian, to be considered a great horse. In my eyes, you have to be able to overcome adversity. And as you described, she has done that already in a couple different ways, losing a shoe in the way, acorn, not getting off to a particularly great start in the CCA Oaks. She's a really good one. Yeah, yeah. Overcome adversity. That's a big thing. Are, are you listening? Fierceness. Uh, I, I'm, I'm teasing fierceness. Sorry. I, I shouldn't tease horses, Matt Schiffman. That's, I'm better than that. Anyway, the next horse I want to talk about is already a champion. Torpedo Anna well on her way. Maybe Doorknock well on his way to becoming a champion. But Idiomatic is already a champion. Idiomatic has won 11 of 15, has the five-year-old daughter of Curlin for trainer Brad Cox and Judd Mott. Now she's uh, very close to being undefeated this year, but uh, there are some rumblings. There are some rumblings, not necessarily by, by you and I, but there are some rumblings that maybe she's lost a step from her great form last year. What do you think? What did you see Saturday at Mom? Well, I saw on Saturday, uh, um, you know, I don't want to uh, uh, be critical of jockeys because they're out there riding, but I didn't particularly like the ride that, idiomatic got uh, um, she was able to get out front and sit on the lead in uh, relatively slow fractions and and relax and when that was happening when you've got a jockey like irad ortiz who was in the race he made a move he made a move uh, heading into the turn and a fast move and got up onto 
idiomatic shoulders very quickly. And I think there was a surprise factor there. And idiomatic was going smoothly and slow and, and, and in a relatively easy pace while Irat had his horse going fast. And all of a sudden, uh, idiomatic had to be asked for a full effort and get up to that, um, which she was able to do. So I know that the finish margin was small, and some people are interpreting that as she lost the step. But under those circumstances, she got going, and she dug in and won that race when that the horse that Irad was riding the advantage. Yeah, I, I certainly thought that Soul of the Soul of an Angel got a better ride. Now, on the one hand, you have Soul of an Angel, Matt, who's four of thirty-eight lifetime. But on the other hand, Soul of an Angel looks like a different horse since going to Sappy Joseph. Soul of an Angel ran a big race and got a good ride, very good ride in the Molly Pitcher, and it was game. And it took some heart for Idiomatic to win. Um, she could have easily won the Ogden Phipps, by the way. She she was she got the wide trip in there and just got beat by Randomized, maybe her top competition for the best older female, along with Scylla. And maybe throw in Soul of an Angel now. But Idiomatic is still the champion, still the best. She proved it again in the Molly Pitcher. Maybe that's who Torpedo Anna will face uh, the first time she leaves Serial Phillies, if she goes in the Alabama over the Traverse. That would be an interesting matchup. Idiomatic and others taking on the younger Torpedo Anna. As we look to the Breeders' Cup Classic, Matt, yeah, we already talked about Doorknock, but what about Chapit Trice? Tapit Trice was one of the best three-year-olds in the country. And maybe I say that with a little hesitation because he ended the year with a four-race losing streak last year. But the Tampa Bay Derby winner and the Bluegrass winner ran a good race in the Belmont. Third in the Belmont, third in the Travers. Todd Pletcher stopped on him after the Travers, his fourth straight loss, which included the Kentucky Derby and the Haskell. He brought him back. He wanted to bring him back a little sooner. He wanted a long ra uh, break. But a uh, little setbacks here and there. Didn't get to run them until Haskell Day. But what we saw in the Monmouth Cup looked like a very good Tapit Trice. It sure did, Brian. Uh, a horse that uh, has, has flashed a lot of talent during his career. Uh, had a, a good run in, uh, in the three-year-old division last year. And then a not-so-good run. But... I guess the time was needed because, boy, he looked really good at Monmouth Park winning the Monmouth Cup. Uh, just dominated, dominated that race, which a good horse should have done, and he did do. Yeah, Highland Falls was a well-beaten second in this race, and Highland Falls had run some uh, nice races. Maybe that wasn't his best performance, but Tapit Trice, a horse who should be fine at 10 furlongs, um, is an interesting uh, horse as we look ahead towards the Breeders' Cup Classic, maybe the Jockey Club Gold Cup next for Tapit Trice. Let's talk about one more race at Monmouth, Matt. It actually happened the day before the Haskell. It was Friday, and a horse we've been following since uh, early in his days is Bookham Dano. Bookham Dano, a son of Buchero. Buchero, of course, a really nice horse, a turf sprinter, uh, basically, uh, uh, for trainer Tim Gleishaw a few years uh, ago. This is a three-year-old gelding, Matt. As a two-year-old, he won three starts with second and one out of four races. As a three-year-old, he's got three wins and a second in four races. We like what we see from Bookham Dano. Oh, yeah, we sure do. We love that Bookham Dano is a New Jersey bred, and we love what we see on the track. He he is a, he is a darn good three-year-old. He is fast. He is a... a a real force in the sprint division. And, and you know, I got to admit, Brian, one of the things that that uh, impresses me most about Bookham Dano was his performance in the Saudi Derby uh, going a distance of ground when he was a very close second behind uh, 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 the, the Japanese horse that ran so well in the Kentucky Derby. I'm forgetting his name. Was it Forever, Forever Together? Forever Young. Forever young. Forever young, yes. Yeah, yeah. But no doubt, Bookham Dano can can uh, run six furlongs to a mile. He, he, he's been beaten at a mile, and he was beaten in the Saudi Derby at a mile. But Forever Young had to work to get him late. 
is distance might be best. Uh, best distance might be seven furlongs. Uh, this was six furlongs. And, and again, I saw a few people say, oh, he, he only won this by a, a whisker in a listed stakes. But uh, that horse he beat, Little Knee, keep, a, keep an eye on Little Knee. Little Knee was three for three with three easy wins going in. He is a serious sprinter as well. Uh, Bookham Dano got him, though, overcame the advantage in the stretch and got him like really good horses do. Bookham Dano will be in the grade one Alan Jerkins next, Matt, and and I think he's a real threat to win the Breeders' Cup Sprint later in the year as a three-year-old. Last horse we want to mention was also Friday, and it happened at Saratoga. We got an undefeated horse headed to the Traverse, Matt. Undefeated horses are always ones to watch, and we got to watch Unmatched Wisdom because this uh, son of Caro Prince has looked good in winning three straight. He did not debut until May, and now all of a sudden he's a he's a real Traverse contender. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, and the fact that he uh, didn't start until May for trainer Chad Brown and, and since then has run three times. That's a lot of races uh, packed in a short amount of time for a Chad Brown runner who usually uh, – Chad usually spaces his horses out a little bit more. But uh, he seems to know that he's got a good one here. And, and, uh, and with big races ahead, he had to get him rolling, and, and he has been rolling. Uh, so impressive with uh, the move from the maiden to the allowance to the Curlin Stakes. Yes, I know the Curlin Stakes is, re is restricted to um, horses that had not won a stakes race yet. So it was the perfect spot for unmatched wisdom in his development. Yeah, actually, he beat a stakes winner. Corporate Power, who who ran second, uh, is a nice horse. And Corporate Power might uh, be uh, in the Travers as well. Corporate Power was beaten one length by Unmatched Wisdom. So Unmatched Wisdom did not roll in here. But he did it rather easily. And, and this is a horse who I, I like the fact that he debuted at a mile, quickly went up to nine furlongs. He's already run nine furlongs twice within his first three months of racing. That's, that's interesting. And he'll get the one race a month uh, uh, pattern going again in the Travers. A horse to watch. He's he's probably not one of the very top horses for the Travers yet. Interesting fact about Unmatched Wisdom, Matt, as a yearling, he went for $25,000. Pin hooking is, is a, a, a thing where you can make some money, and Quantum Investments did it because they sold him as a two-year-old for four hundred and fifty thousand. So he went yes. from twenty-five thousand to four hundred and fifty thousand in less than a year. Klarovich bought him for for Brown or vice versa, and uh, unmatched wisdom three for three headed into the Travers. All right, that, a long list of stars. There were more. We could have mentioned Get Smoke and Matt. We could have mentioned uh, Raging Sea, but uh, those are six horses we wanted to highlight here from a big weekend of racing last Saturday and Friday uh, at Saratoga and Monmouth. Let's move forward, though, because we want to handicap this Jim Dandy. Not a big field again, but a very interesting field and one that will certainly have an impact on the Travers. We'll start from the rail map because I think the rail horse might be the horse to beat. Sierra Leone, Flavian Pra, Chad Brown, uh, Matt, after winning... The Risen Star and the Bluegrass with his late run going nine furlongs. Stretched out to 10 furlongs for the Kentucky Derby and the Belmont. Couldn't quite get there in either one. Yeah, I mean, and, and let's face it, in those races, uh, he was running against the best three-year-olds in the Triple Crown races. Um, maybe, in a way, this is a, a, the best spot that Sierra Leone has been in, in terms of the the field size, although this is a very nice field in here, Brian. In addition to Sierra Leone, there are two other grade one winners and, and a grade three winner in, in, in the field also. Uh, it's a quality, smaller field, but I think we'll talk a little bit more about the, the probable pace scenario as we look at the rest of the field, which I think is what gives Sierra Leone a big advantage. Yeah, there, there's Sierra Leone alone in the back as we look at the time form U.S. pace projector that Matt started to talk about. Everybody on the everybody else in the six horse field has speed. Uh, maybe five Goulds Gold is kind of a tactical horse who who will sit off the lead a little bit, but the other four certainly have speed. 
And uh, that's an advantage right there. Pace makes the race. And, and just looking at this, it, it screams out Sierra Leone has the pace advantage as we go into this Jim Dandy field. Sierra Leone, people are down on him, uh, and he hasn't run um, uh, consistently straight down the stretch, certainly, as he got beat by a nose in the Kentucky Derby and, and just over a length in the Belmont. But he's still running very well in those two losses. And with pace making the race, Sierra Leone looks like a big danger here. Number two is Seize the Gray, Matt. Uh, Seize the Gray, of course, tra trained by the guy who's nearing 90, D. Wayne Lucas, a legend in the game, has seized the gray going pretty well with wins in the Pat Day Mile. Three starts back. The Preakness, all the way, two starts back. But then in the Belmont, he kind of faded out of the picture after door knock came a knocking. Yeah, and absolutely. He, he as, as is to be expected with a D. Wayne Lucas horse, um, he had had, you know, he has had plenty of racing, and I guess he's gotten a little bit of a freshening in the uh, 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 after the Belmont Stakes, uh, heading into this Jim Dandy. Yeah, uh, we have um, we have speed, and, and sees the gray is obviously more speed that we've seen early uh, earlier in his races this summer, spring and summer. The Preakness winner dangerous but it'll be interesting to see if he can bounce back in a race that might not set him up well more speed is the number three batten down Matt. in fact i think batten down has become really good when they've let him roll early he showed some promise to this beautifully bred son of tap it in his first three starts but then in his last two starts he absolutely rolled in a maiden in the ohio derby yeah, that's for sure. Uh, another uh, late developing horse uh, uh, for us to talk about in the show, uh, Brian, uh, batten down for Bill Mott. Uh, uh, it's come out and, you know, it took him a while to uh, break his maiden, uh, which he did in his fourth try. Um, and, and since then, and since then, uh, he... Uh, since then, he has uh, uh, done nothing wrong after the maiden race, gone on to the Ohio Derby uh, uh, for a nice victory. Yeah, tap it, close hatches is the breeding. And we, we, we've seen that work. And certainly, batten down is starting to work. Like I said, he's gotten better in the last two starts where he went right, really went right to the lead. And he, he, he kind of sprinted out early. So it'll be interesting to see what uh what he does in this jim dandy with other good speed in the race but batten down is a serious horse he might be better at 10 furlongs uh i'm just going to throw that out there before the jim dandy and certainly this race may not set up for him but batten down is a very interesting developing horse for trainer Belmont. maybe the same could be said about pony express he hasn't run a mistakes race yet but he's an interesting speed horse as well it's not a gun runner john sadler's had a lot of good horses of late not uh he's gotten better with three successive starts in southern california he exploded onto the scene in his third start winning a maiden by nine lengths last time yeah <laughs> you know a curious uh, entry into this race i guess you got to assume that uh trainer john sadler uh, uh thinks this horse has some talent if he's shipping all the way across the country uh on just a uh, maiden victory to run at Saratoga. Yeah, I, I think so, Matt. I think they think he's a very good horse. And you look at that nine length maiden win last time and it looks like he's a very good horse. It's a lot to ask to run against fierceness and seize the gray and Sierra Leone and batten down uh, coming out of a maiden race. But you have to look at Pony Express a little bit. And again, more speed. Number five, Gould's Gold. Uh, I guess this is the long shot in the field. Um, Gould's Gold worked with Torpedo Anna not that long ago at Saratoga. Son of Golden Sense, trainer Kenny McPeak, uh, Brian Hernandez Jr., That those connections again. Four good races out of four tries as a three-year-old, easily winning his maiden and then finishing third and then second in two straight stakes races. The last two were solid, the Sir Barton and then the Ohio Derby. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I, you certainly can't complain a lot, a lot about uh, Gould's Gold with uh, with a second in the Ohio Derby, 
uh, a second in the Sir Barton on Preak this weekend, a third at Oakham Park after his maiden special weight victory. Um, but that's the only victory that he has at this point. And uh, this is a this is again a really good field. Um, he's in a tough spot. He's he's in a tough spot, but a pretty nice horse. Number six, of course, is fierceness, Matt. Uh, the son of City of Light was the two-year-old champion. Let's run these races down real quick, just in case you forgot. He won his maiden at Saratoga by more than 11 lengths. Then he was seventh in the Champagne. He won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile to clinch the Eclipse Award by more than six lengths in fast time over a good field. Then he was third in the Holy Bull against not so tough a field. Then he won the Florida Derby by more than 13 lengths in fast time. Then as the Kentucky Derby favorite, he faded to 15th. Which fierceness are we going to see on Saturday in the Jim Dandy? I don't know, Brian. Your guess is, is as good as mine is. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what has caused those uh, uh, performances that were disappointments when he was a heavy favorite uh, 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 in the uh, um, early on and, and when he was the favorite in the Kentucky Derby, that big profile races, which have a lot of uh, racing fans down on him and labeling him as a horse that can't handle adversity. Maybe that's true. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's just immaturity. I know uh, Todd Pletcher is very high on the way that he has been training, heading up to now the Jim Dandy. We talked about it a little bit, heading up to the Haskell. I think they made the right choice going to the Jim Dandy. Um, we'll see. It's not going to be an easy race for him. It's not an ideal setup. He's going to be have to be part of a lot of pressure in those horses that prefer to run out front in this field. So we'll see if he can handle that situation. Yeah, yeah. We showed you the time form US pace projector with all the speed, fast pace button lit. Fierceness might be the speed of the speed in here, but sees the gray batten down certainly have a lot of speed. And Pony Express has good speed as well. So yeah, the pace does not set up for the two favorites equally. Fierceness has the harder time. H however, dropping back to nine furlongs, he's had plenty of time. He's working well. Um, I don't necessarily buy the good one race, bad the next uh, uh, pattern that he's run and expect him, oh, he's going to run big this time. So a lot of things point to Fierceness running a much better race here than he did in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, he obviously is comfortable at Saratoga. Johnny Velasquez, he's on the outside, which kind of gives him a, uh, maybe a little bit of tactical advantage over the other speed. But still, yeah, pace makes the race, Matt. It's hard to get past that pace makes the race in my head. With that in mind, who's your top pick in this Jim Dandy? Well, Brian, you know, I think I hinted at it a little bit early on in the rundown when we were talking about Sierra Leone. I think Sierra Leone is getting an ideal setup in uh, in this field with the other five horses preferring to run close to the lead and Sierra Leone making a late run. Um, yeah, I, I hope that he doesn't get too far behind um, because uh, uh, that will always make it difficult, uh, although the Saratoga track has certainly been playing, uh, has been playing uh, fairly. Uh, you know, he, he ran so well in the triple crown races, six starts, never worse than third. Um, I like the pace scenario and, and I like Sierra Leone's credentials. Yeah, I, I think Sierra Leone gets everything he wanted here. He gets a fast pace to run at. He's the rallier in the field, nine furlongs at Saratoga. He ran well in the Belmont, despite, again, some stretch uh, issues with him bearing in. I, I think he's strictly the horse to beat because of the pace. Uh, buying for favoritism with fierceness, yeah. It, maybe you use him in a multi-race ticket. A friend asked me before the CCA Oaks, hey, I'm betting the pick five. Should I take a shot to beat Torpedo Anna at really, really low odds? And I said, heck no, she's a single. Find some odds in the other races. Um, unfortunately, he didn't win the pick five, but I, I think you did, Matt, Matt Schiffman. Yes, uh, yeah, I did. Uh, uh... Uh, the opportunity to use uh, uh, Torpedo Anna in that in that pick five and get a free square. It was 
a free square for me. And anytime you're betting the thick five, you 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 got to get lucky and catch some big uh, catch some bigger prices in races where maybe you had uh, 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 two or three horses. But when you got a single like that, uh, you can take a shot, and it worked that well. It wasn't a big big one, but it was a nice one. There you go. Congratulations, Matt. I'm always happy when you win. All right. Let me get a parting shot from you, or maybe that was already your parting shot. I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, no, you know, this summer racing is is what I look forward to most in the, in the year. You know, the three-year-olds coming out of the, the Triple Crown Series with all that experience and, and, and the best horses, the top horses. Nobody's Nobody's on a break at this time of year. Everybody's out running, looking for uh, 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 grade one wins, big races, division championships. Uh, I love this time of year. Yeah, well said that. And we also love all the people that tune in every week to Horse Center. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, go ahead and hit that button. Turn on your notifications. Give us a thumbs up that you like this video. Leave a comment, all of the above. We appreciate you. Matt and I do here at Horse Racing Nation. Also, thank you to Candace Curtis for the race graphics she provides us each week, the Jim Dandy this week, the Derby Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. They're our sponsor. Thank you to them. And thank you to Timeform US for the pace projections that we like to use and we found so crucial in using this week when picking, when we're both picking Sierra Leone in the Jim Dandy. Until next week, Matt, I think next week we'll be talking about the Whitney, the older horses in the Whitney. Until next week, have a great week. Good luck. We'll see you soon right here 